folks, Ryan Wilson here from Predator Inc. Appreciate you guys watching as always. And uh, it's pretty much what I say every single time on the intro. I need to come up with something new. So if you got any suggestions, let me know down below. Um, I gotta mix it up, but uh, I'm just a trained monkey apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've got this amazing M998. I'm gonna do a quick uh, overview on the truck in a couple of minutes, but first I'll cut to some footage of Sanderson going over a red truck. This thing's pretty badass. It actually was all over the internet, all over the forums, people were talking about it. Pretty cool truck. So based on the pictures, it didn't look that exciting, but once we got it here, it's pretty sick as far as what the capabilities of this truck is. So uh, you probably recognize it floating around online. It was up for sale, but uh, let's cut to that footage now. We're here in shop today to show off this 2000 model plus a few other things we're gonna pick up. But this truck is one that was highlighted in an auction site for sale. It's a 2000 model HMC4 four-door hardtop with a camera shell on the back. Uh, it went for a remarkably inexpensive amount, I feel, because one, it didn't have a savage title, but two, it has this camper shell. This thing actually looks really good. I'm going to spend a little bit of time to show you this truck. It's here for a post-purchase inspection, another variation of the PPI, but the customer that purchased it is out of Washington. It was for sale out of here in San Diego, so it's in for what we call our 12K service. All fluids are going to be changed and uh, an ABC inspection is going to be performed on it to give the customer an, in, an indication or a good point to start his maintenance log moving forward. I like to do this on all vehicles that we purchase and or that customers purchase and send to us so that way they can hit that reset button, they know the mileage count moving forward and when they need to do all the various fluid changes and services uh, needed. So Campbell's already halfway through all this service work. He's got the radiator, engine, transmission, transfer case, diffs, and geared hubs drained. We will also be inspecting the air filter, changing that out, fuel filter, and everything else. Again, a 12K service is everything on this vehicle. Uh, I can't emphasize enough the importance of this type of service when you first buy a vehicle. The, the portal, the geared hub, this is the magic behind the Humvee, I feel. It's something to be revered and also respected. Every time you go off-roading, check the fluid level in this. You've got a vent system throughout this whole vehicle, and if this is compromised and you go on mudding and you get water in here, you got a quart, quart and a half maybe at most in here, you get some water in there, you're gonna find out real quick the issues. We developed a product years ago, which is a geared hub heat sink. Fits here, thick billet aluminum on that machine you hear in the background. We did add that sight, so you can keep an eye on that fluid quality. If you start to see that milky, then you know, hey, it's time to get that changed. We've got some moisture in there. We'll get into a bit more of the details there. Going over that ABC list that's an AM general sourced inspection form um, soon to come. But I'm looking forward to getting this thing down on the ground to be able to check out that camper and how that was built. This thing's pretty neat. Uh, again, I'm not taking any ownership. Predator did not build this truck. This thing is neat. Uh, the fact it got so much exposure online, I thought you guys might want to see another look at it, a little bit more in-depth description of it since, again, it was so popular on the, on the auction site. The customer before, the owner before, had this plate installed. He's got some steps on his front bumper. That's so he can walk up and access the storage compartment on the front of that camper shell. Again, another level of practicality to this build. This one just hits right home what I've been trying to drive for the last few episodes. Practicality, functional builds, reach for these keys, put these things to work, whether they're on the trail, uh, on, the, on the highway, whatever it be, just get out there and have a good time. So I believe looking at the details, this was built in 2002, 2003. So it still looks really good after 17 years. Stoked to get this thing outside to really show you guys what's going on. All right, so the truck's done. The techs have wrapped up. The fluid changes, that 12K service, all important hub service, and the ABC maintenance log. It's outside now, getting ready to load up to ship out to its new home, where it's gonna go on an adventure, potentially earlier this, or later this week, because it's the new owner's birthday. So, happy birthday to you, sir. Hope you like the rig, hope you have a good time. Look forward to seeing the pictures of the adventures you're getting into. Uh, we're gonna get around the back here, take a look at it. So again, show you what this thing's all about. I think they did a great job and bang up build. It's a typical HMC Ford, but the camper shell they put together, I think works out well. It does not hit the roof at all. No contact points on the vehicle, obviously, other than the bed. They did utilize a Humvee exhaust and they stashed a 20 gallon fuel cell 
on that rear uh, passenger fender well, which I think, again, great idea. Already has the factory auxiliary and main tank. Adding that extra 20 gallons, getting another range to it. All this thing really needs is a Predator Duramax under the hood. So as you know, the main reason I wanted to highlight this is because it was so popular on Facebook through its auction process, mainly because of this camper shell. I want to give you guys a peek inside, see how it is. Oversized door. My size definitely likes that. It's tough to get in some of these trailers because they make them so small. Small kitchenette on the left. Good size bed up top. Uh, it has these braces or these steps that they were designed to slide in the factory receiver. Pretty cool concept, ease of that entry. All around, just a pretty cool, practical, uh, functional vehicle. The way they've taken this HMC4 and built it is almost overland style rig. One last feature I want to share with you guys is a pretty cool uh, concept and, and finished product. Is a 20 gallon tank that they put in this driver's side fender well. It's filled and accessed by a fill neck here in the propane side. Again, I just like the way this is done. You know, I think a lot of people will respect the, the, de the design, the execution. I just like all the different shops, the privateers, all these guys that are doing stuff with the platform that we're, we've pretty much been married to for 20 plus years. As you might see behind me, we have another novelty that's quite popular in Facebook the last few years or so, is Jason Campbell. He does our transport. You've seen him on our vlogs before. Jason, how we doing? We're doing great. How are you guys doing? Good. So it's good to be back over here. We're going to get this rig up to Washington and another one going up with it. So. Well, good deal. You've been doing quite a few hauls, right? Yeah, it's been, nice. been running all over. So from east to west, it doesn't matter. Wherever you got a rig, wherever it needs to go. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen him. He's been quite vocal on Facebook, picking up uh, from Gut Planet, a few other locations. He's one of our exclusive tra uh, transport options out of our San Diego location. So good to have you. It's always good. Could nice to have that consistency. Someone that you can communicate with, someone that has the insurance for one, and reliability. That's key. Um, overall, it's just a really clean truck. A uh, customer brought it down for a little bit of service work as well as a tire carrier. It's that custom uh, tire carrier that Sanderson talked about on uh, maybe like two or three blogs ago. But that's back from powder coat, so we're bolting it on in the next couple days. That hasn't been talked about at all yet, Ryan. It was not talked about at all. So I'm talking <laughs> and, and, about it now. It and hasn't this is talked just about. a clean truck. About it. Wait a minute, this is just a clean truck? So, helmet top. We've got the uh, whip antennas, which really aren't very useful on a civilian application. You can modify them and turn them into uh, CB and VHF antennas. It takes quite a bit of work and they're not as effective as like true CB and VHF antennas. But if I was gonna run these antennas, that's what I would do is switch them over. Uh, there's a couple local shops that can do that for us. Um, it also has the uh, red dot kit on top, which is a whole HVAC unit. Uh, makes a big difference cooling the cab and also heating it up. So um, definitely recommend that. Um, it is gonna sacrifice a little bit of height to the truck. So pulling into various areas, you may have some issues, but again, uh, it, it fits with this build. And obviously you can't get past these 40 inch tires and Maxxis tires. Uh, they just look badass. Uh, mounted on black rhino rims. Um, the only problem with these tires is it's just the ride quality is a little bit rough. They're not as clean as like the Toyo Open Countries. Toyo Open Countries tend to track a little bit better. There's just a lot of tread. But if you are in like really severe off-road conditions, this is going to outperform the Toyo. So it's kind of a balance. You got to have to figure out what's best for you. For me personally, I'm driving a tremendous amount of miles on road to get to off-road terrain. From San Diego, we usually go out to the Anza Borrego Desert, which is probably, oh shoot, two hour drive. So I'm putting on, I don't know, 50 times the miles that I would ever put on off-road as on-road. So most of my driving miles are gonna be on-road and uh, the Toyos work very well for me and cover everything that I'm gonna be doing off-road where I wouldn't have to step up to the Maxxis tires. Um, usually, and also with CTIS on the H1s, uh, it gives you a little bit more traction. 
on the Humvees. Most all of them don't have CTIS, but you can upgrade it, which is pretty cool. You could upgrade the spindles here, replace those with the uh, civilian spindles and CTIS lines as we did on uh, Humvee, I think a couple episodes ago, we converted that truck over to CTIS. Uh, worked out really well on that truck. So uh, yeah, we'll get into this truck later and get some more in-depth uh, footage as well as the tire carrier going on the back of the truck. So until then, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.